Southern Appalachia, the land of blue smoke, streams, waterfalls, symbolic of the strong and resilient people who named it Shekana Hay. Just maybe a place to renew your strength on a Smoky Mountain getaway. Gonna find me a ticket now. Go as far as I can. Go. I ain't ever back. A woman seeks refuge here. You will bring her to me. Welcome to Cherokee in Bryson City. In this, our fifth video of the Smokies, we explore the North Carolina side of the mountains, taking you to downtown Bryson City with a rooftop brewery, coffee, and ice cream shops. Hop on board the Great Smoky Mountain Railroad as it travels along Fontana Lake and through the Nantahala Gorge. Show the different cars you can ride in and options for Jeep tours, zip lining, and rafting on the Nantahala River. We'll show kayak tours on Fontana Lake, the Almond RV Resort with boat rentals and dog-friendly cabins, the Deep Creek region of the National Park, and the Tunnel to Nowhere. In Cherokee, we'll take you up the strip along the Oconalufti River, the Cherokee Island Park, the Fire Mountain Trails, then travel along the Raven Fork of the Oconalufti River to Mingle Falls. Show two great RV campgrounds with cabins right on the river. We'll learn the history of this land, about the strong and resilient eastern band of the Cherokee hey, at the Oconalufti Village as well as Cherokee's longest running attraction, Unto These Hills Outdoor Drama. We'll take you inside the huge, gorgeous casino with so many great eateries. Show the scenic drive to Maggie Valley, stopping at Sokol Falls, driving the Blue Ridge Parkway, the picturesque Jonathan Creek in quaint Maggie Valley, with several places to eat or lodge with a view. Meet Dan the Gardener at Mountain Air Crafts, We'll show two more RV campgrounds that also have cabins, as well as two additional scenic cabins. If you've been overwhelmed with the stress of life, yeah. maybe it's time to experience the nature, the culture, the waters, and the people of Bryson City, Cherokee, and Maggie Valley. It's sunrise over the Cherokee Casino. Blue smoke lies over the valley. It's really fog, but the Cherokee word for it is Shikanahe. Sounds way better. Great Foggy Mountain National Park would sound kind of weird. We'll come back to Cherokee later, but for now we have a train to catch. We head 10 miles west of Cherokee to Bryson City. Bryson City sits on the banks of the Tuckasegee River, about 70 miles southwest of Asheville. It's a paradise for the outdoor activities and nature lovers. You'll see lots of bikers. Bella getting lots of love from the SOB riders. There's the Swain County Visitor Center where you can pick up your now required parking pass for the National Park, which is $5 per day or $15 per week. Not bad considering there's no entrance fee to the park. There's the Everett Hotel, was built in 1908 as the Bryson City Bank. It has a rooftop terrace. Downtown is small. The main street is Everett Street. And really the length of the shops is from the visitor center to the train depot is only about two tenths of a mile. So easily walkable. Some notable places to get a drink or a bite to eat. The Mountain Layers Brewery with a rooftop lounge. They don't have food, but next to it is the Rice Wagon Hawaiian food truck. So you can quickly grab a plate there and bring it up to the Mountain Layers Brewing Company. I'm having a vegetarian stir fry, getting my much needed vegetables. Across the street is the retro looking Soda Pops ice cream, but they don't take cash. There's Pasqualino's Italian restaurant and pizzeria. Across the street, there's Honey Bears for fancy cupcakes with ice cream. And there's also the Boxcar Cafe and Cones next to the train station. 
For milkshakes, ice cream. For coffee before your train ride, I recommend the La Dolce Vita Bakery. But you probably want to get there about 90 minutes before your train departure, before it gets too busy. They have a good selection of pastries, including a gluten-free banana nut muffin. Really good. On this day, it was raining and was able to pick up an umbrella at Rita's Hallmark store. Gonna catch a freight train down at the station. I don't care which way it goes. I'm gonna climb a mountain oh, the highest mountain low. Parking for the train is in the big lot across the street. It's $6 for regular autos and $16 for RVs. At this station, there's a sign that shows where the different cars board. It's a long train, 18 cars, so you definitely want to know what number you are boarding at. If you ordered a box lunch, you pick it up here. Box lunches are anywhere from $8.50 to $13. And you get water and your box lunch. I have the veggie meal. You get the sandwich, chips, a cookie, and some sliced apples. Now, they also have food you can get on board the train in the conductor's concessions car. Caitlin here, making Eric and I some tasty pulled pork nachos. With this being a rainy day, it was nice to have some hot food as well. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> nachos and trains. I was thrilled to be joined by the Smoky Mountain family, who drove down here from Gatlinburg. Gonna buy me a ticket now. Go as far as I can, Lord. Before you buy your ticket, let's show you all your seating options. Between this train and the one the day after, we had subscribers in all the different categories, and each one said they loved it. First, you have the open air basic, which is what we booked in the Fontana car. I just love being out in the open air. And then there's the open air premium, which is about $34 more, which tends to be the first car closest to the engine. With that, you get a free tote bag, mugs, and free refills of soda, coffee, and iced tea. One of our subscribers, David Clark, who was in the premium open-air Nantahala car, said it was fantastic. Among the enclosed cars, there's the Coach Class, which is the cheapest of all. And then there's Coach Plus, which also has tables. So this car has the windows that go up and down. It's not open air, uh, but you, you're sitting in the booths here, like Brittany is, and like Randy and me, and like the girls are. So this is a... Oh, where, where is she at? There she is, Bella! By the way, only service dogs are allowed on the train, but there is boarding available at Cherokee Animal Care Clinic. There's Crown Class, where you receive a free tote bag, a mug, soda, coffee, iced tea. You get larger windows, but there's no tables. And then there's First Class, with a dining table, and guests are served a brunch or a lunch. Here's one of our subscribers, Greg Martin, who was on this car with his wife, Mary. There are two main routes. Gonna take it southbound, all the way to Georgia now. Under that train run out of track. We are on the Natahala Gorge route, which leaves in the morning. It crosses over the Tuckasegee River. That was also named by the Cherokees. It means place of the turtle. After the Tuckasegee River, it heads west, then cuts south over and along Fontana Lake. And then further south along the Nantahala River, where it goes through a gorge, and you eventually start to see rafters. The other route is the Tuckasegee River excursion, which leaves in the afternoon and follows the Tuckasegee River southeast to Dillsboro, North Carolina as you pass by the former movie set of The Fugitive. There's also the Carolina Moonshine Experience, which follows the Natahala Gorge route. In fact, it is the same train. You are seated on the Carolina Shine car, a first-class car, and served triple distilled handcrafted moonshine. There are specialty seasonal trips too, like the popular Polar Express, which runs in November and December. And you have options to choose the diesel or the steam, depending on the day. As we run along Fontana Lake, on the opposite side of the lake is the Almond Boat and RV Park that also has dog-friendly one and two bedroom lakefront cabins. Their marina has boat rentals available as well. 
For non-motorized boat front, there's Endless River Adventures, which has both rafting and kayak trips. They offer kayaking instructions for before you get out on the whitewater. This is the Finger Lake Day Use Area, right next to the Nantahala River. Great for swimming or kayaking. Accessible on Highway 28 in Almond, North Carolina. The train heads further down the Nantahala River. The Nantahala Gorge is where some of the most popular outdoor activities of the Smokies are at, with whitewater rafting, zip line, fishing, hiking, and more. Also a tip, when you book a seat, it's good to be on the left side of the train, as that is the side the lakes and rivers are on. If you do, however, end up on the right side, it's not too big of a deal, because you can move around from side to side if it's not too crowded. In coming back, you will be on the river side. On this Nantahala Gorge route, you have options for zip lining, rafting, or jeep tours with wild water. One of the things in the programs that we do is that we have Raft and Rail. It's a program where you can either get on the train and either do rafting, zip lining, or trail tours around the Bryson City Gorge and the Nantahala Gorge. So what we do is we get in Bryson City, we make sure all the customers are ready, they get box lunches, we have them sit through the two hour train ride and right after we get them right on the rafts or the trails, the jeep tours, and the zip lining. We get them back to the outpost through the two hour river ride, splashing and whatnot, and zip lining, touring around the waterfalls in the area, which is a beautiful area as you can tell with all the trees and the rivers. They ride in the wild water car and are let off right here, just beyond the Nantahala Outdoor Center, where they transfer into the bus for the zip lining and rafting, and the rail and trail passengers hop in the Jeeps. They also have a kid zip line for children four through six. The train then begins to head back. The diesel engines that were in the rear of the train are now at the front of the train pulling it, with the steam engine in the rear. It arrives at the Nantahala Outdoor Center for a one hour layover. They do paddling lessons, whitewater rafting, they have this treetop adventure net thing in behind us here. Really nice spot right here on the river. I'm gonna show you around while we're on our layover with the Smoky Mountain Railroad. This is the center of all the adventure in Swain County, a place where the railroad passengers, rafters, and hikers from the Appalachian Trail gather for a break to get a bite to eat or stock up on supplies. The trail actually runs through right beside the NOC here. And then this is where the AT crosses the bridge here. You can rent quality specialized mountain bikes starting at $40 a day or book a three-hour guided tour for about $75. There's the Big Wessa Riverside Pub, a counter-serve eatery right on the river. Also, large barbecue grills. You see these numbered sticks here. This is like a slalom course for rafters, so you're gonna go in between those as you're going down the river. There's the NOC Outfitters store to gear up with paddling equipment or clothing and supplies for camping, backpacking, or just relaxing by the riverside. There's the River's Inn restaurant with views of the river and bridge. It is located right near where the rafters end their trips. The rafting happens from March through October. There are several companies. NOC has a guided three-hour rafting trip, $70, or a four-hour single inflatable kayak rental is $47. A double is $94. There's Carolina Outfitters. A two-hour guided trip is $49, or a non-guided trip, $27. A two-hour inflatable kayak rental is $30. And there's Rolling Thunder River Company that has a pet-friendly rafting trip if your dog is at least 35 pounds and has their own life jacket and booties. A look at scenic US-19 before we hop back on the train. About a mile and a half west of the NOC is the Barbecue Shack where you can enjoy tasty barbecue right on the river. If you're coming over here to do this or if you're staying in North Carolina, it's going to be about five to six hours, you know, for, for the ride that we took, and, uh, I mean, but it was worth every minute. Uh. I want to show you two areas in Bryson City before we head back to Cherokee. Two and a half miles north of downtown is the Deep Creek area of the National Park. On the left, Bryson Patch Cabin Rentals. On the right is Smoky Mountain Campground with a general store where you can rent tubes and they also have cabins. On the left side of the road, just before the park entrance, is the Deep Creek Lodge where you can rent tubes for 
in bicycle rentals for $20 per hour or $40 for half a day. They also have an ice cream shop here. In just a short walk or drive into the National Park where there is a sizable picnic area with restrooms. This area is known for streams and waterfalls, nothing too crazy, which is why tubing is popular here. Also has a couple of the few trails where bicycles are allowed in the National Park. The Deep Creek and Indian Creek trails. There's three waterfall trails. The Juni Wank Falls, about a half a mile long. The Three Waterfalls Loop, which is 2.4 miles. And the Deep Creek Indian Creek Loop, that is 4.4 miles. I'll bet you can get a good deal on this cabin. We now head up Lakeview Drive, better known as the Road to Nowhere. It was built to replace an earlier road so people could reach cemeteries of those who lived here before the National Park was established. It was supposed to stretch along the north shore of Fontana Lake for 30 miles, but due to an environmental issue, construction was stopped, with the road ending at a tunnel about six miles into the National Park. It does get pretty dark in the tunnel. You can't really see in front of you. I'd recommend bringing a light. As the asphalt ends, it turns into the Lakeshore and Tunnel Bypass Trail, which is an easy 3.2 mile loop trail. Bikes or dogs are not allowed on this trail. All right, let's head to Cherokee. So if you're like me, you may have traveled through Cherokee along this US 441 strip on your way into the National Park or to Gatlinburg. And it might be all you know of this town, but there is so much more to Cherokee that we will show you. We are gonna start at the Aconalufti Island Park, which is at the beginning of Sully Boulevard. Remember that name. That's an important name in Cherokee history. There are two pedestrian bridges that cross the river to the park area. This is a very picturesque park with a bamboo forest, picnic areas, a sand volleyball court. And with the shallow waters of the Akana Lefty River, makes it good for little kids playing or getting your feet wet in the cool mountain stream. We move further up Sully Boulevard. On the right is the BC Outdoors, not only where you can rent bikes or pick up supplies, but also a tap room where you can try one of eight craft beers or ciders. Further up is Cherokee Veterans Park, a memorial to all the Cherokee who took arms to defend our country. As you learn about the Cherokee, you gain a lot of respect for them. On the left is the Museum of the Cherokee Indian, which is $12 for adults, $7 for children, six through 12. We, however, are going to the Akana Lefty Indian Village to learn about the Cherokee. We pass onto these hills outdoor drama, which we'll do in the evening. They are right next to each other. In fact, the overflow parking for the outdoor drama is at the Indian Village. Horses, food, munitions. You're taking homesteaders captive, and I shudder to think. It is $25 for adults or $15 for children, 6 to 11. There's also combo tickets that include Unto These Hills and or the museum. The village shows what life was like for the Cherokee in the 18th century in the Smokies, set in a scenic forest with friendly guides. Rhododendron. Rhododendron, okay, yeah. They are absolutely gorgeous. You'll be dead before you could ever touch me again. There's special shows with some of the same actors who are in Unto These Hills. See the weapons of warfare that they use with demonstrations. The Cherokee that are out west are actually two completely separate tribes from us now. They are the Cherokee Nation and the United Kadula Band, and we are the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians because we are the descendants of the ones who refuse to leave. So we technically are not a reservation because we own our land. It wasn't issued to us by the federal government. I recommend to do this during the day before you see Unto These Hills because it gives you a context of what you will see. This outdoor drama portrays what led up to the Trail of Tears, where many of the Cherokees were forced out west, and over 4,000 died, but others resisted, and eventually re-emerged as the Eastern Band of the Cherokee. It's a two hour long drama with multiple sets, 
It is $35 for adults and $25 for children 6 to 11. There's options for reserved seating as well as VIP, and you can do a pre-show dinner for $20 with barbecued pork, mac and cheese, baked beans, and more. Next to the Indian Village is the Fire Mountain Trails. Cherokee, compared to a decade or two ago, has really excelled with its ecotourism, making great nature spots to enjoy. And this is one of them. 11 miles of trails for biking, hiking, or running. I was impressed. This trail is very well maintained. There's lots of good elevation changes, high bank turns, long elevated boardwalks. Good for both the serious rider or the recreational rider. There's jumps, which I'm not going to do with Bella in my backpack. By the way, it is a dog-friendly trail. There are scenic overlooks. That's Solly Boulevard down there, where we will continue on our tour. Skilly is part of the trail for advanced riders. Has two wooden ladder bridges with four-foot drops at the end. A dry creek rock garden. So plenty of fun for serious riders. They are also adding 14 miles of trails by the park entrance in a $2 million expansion. And there's also a disc golf course here as well. Now back on Solly Boulevard, just north of Drama Road, a little strip mall with the black bear for souvenirs or try sugar beers for ice cream and coffee. There's the owl cage and Raven Walk gifts for Indian crafts and souvenirs. There's BJ's Diner, a counter serve burger and ice cream eatery with picnic tables or sit in the grassy area behind overlooking the Okana Lefty River. They have very good reviews for a roadside grill. You start to see more rapids in this part of the river. Moving further up Sully Boulevard, on the right is the Many Donut Place, which also has breakfast sandwiches. On the left is the Smoky Mountain Gold Ruby Mine, which is a jewelry store as well as a gym mine. On the right is Paul's Family Restaurant, where you can get buffalo burgers or Indian tacos. There's a Dairy Queen. On the right, the pet-friendly Newfound Lodge. And on the left, a Super 8. For a Super 8, this one has good reviews, although not pet-friendly. On the right is the River's Edge Motel. And then there's the Pink Motel. And just four-tenths of a mile from Aquani Road is a picnic area. A good place to bring your food and eat with a view. As we approach Aquani Road, on the left is Native Brews Tap and Grill with Native American crafted beer, ales, gin, and more. They have a dog-friendly patio area <laughs> with cornhole. I'm not much of a drinker, but I ate here twice because the food was good and a nice area to eat. We are going to turn off US-441 here at Aquani Road to head to Mango Falls. The Okana Lefty River here is at a height that is good for tubing and rapids not too crazy. For $14 you can rent a tube at Cherokee Rapids Tube Rentals where they take you two miles up the river and you float back down to this location. And afterwards you can enjoy some fajitas at El Cajalito Mexican Restaurant. On the other side of the road is Sonic Village where there is a working stone ground water mill. This little mall has a firehouse sub, a couple of leather stores, gift shops, and a fishing store. We are heading up Big Cove Road to Mango Falls. The Okana Lefty River goes into the National Park towards the Visitor Center, way off in the distance there, that we will check out in a bit. But the river splits into the Raven Fork of the Okana Lefty River, and Big Cove Road follows that. There are two really big and nice RV campgrounds here. First is the Cherokee KOA, located about four miles off of US-441. It has a new outdoor pool and hot tub. Also group fire pits, outdoor movie theater, game room, and an off-leash dog park. Of course, full hookups for RVs. Sites right on the river. And everything from rustic camping log cabins to deluxe furnished cabins. Another mile up Big Cove Road is Mingo Falls. There's a lengthy stairway, 161 steps to climb to get to Mingo Falls. It's a quarter mile of a hike. I'd recommend wearing hiking shoes or boots, as the path is pretty rocky. 
there's an observation bridge at the base of the falls. There are plans to put lights here to make this viewable at night. This is all part of the Kuala Boundary, as is Sokol Falls that we'll see in a bit. The Kuala Boundary was established in 1867 as the territory held as a land trust by the U.S. for the eastern band of the Cherokee, some 57,000 acres. Well, what's her name? Bella. Bella, yeah, her name's Bella. Too. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. While many people come here to the falls, they don't realize there's a great area here on the river, good for fishing or sightseeing. So beautiful when the soft evening sun is shining on the Raven Fork of the Lufty River. Two miles north of Mingo Falls, another large, beautiful campground, Jellystone Park. They also have a seasonal outdoor theater, a large playground, basketball court, game room, heated pool, a stocked river for trout fishing. There's sites right on the river, large full hookup sites for RVs, a huge variety of cabins, everything from smaller four-person cabins to large eight-person cabins with full bathroom and shower. Now back on US 441, across the river from Sanuk Village. This is near where we enter the National Park, and Solly Boulevard becomes Newfound Gap Road. It is where you are most likely to see elk or deer. In our first video of this Smoky series, we showed Newfound Gap Road all the way to Gatlinburg. Here, we are just going to show you the Elkana Lefty Visitor Center. This is the newest of all the visitor centers in the Smoky Mountains. Bella becomes an honorary park ranger. So this is the Elkana Lefty Trail. Now this is only one of two trails in the Smoky Mountains that are pet friendly. The other being the Gatlinburg Trail that we showed in last week's video. The Elkana Lefty River is 18 miles long and feeds into the Tuckasegee River in Fontana Lake that we showed earlier. The Farm Museum is free. It's a collection of log structures, including a farmhouse, barn, smokehouse, apple house, and a corn crib with a few roosters. Inside the visitor center, as well as picking up some good info on the national park, there is a pretty good museum to learn about the establishment of the national park, as well as more of the history of the Cherokee Indians. Now back at the beginning of Solly Boulevard, if you take US 19 East, a little over a mile is the Cherokee Casino area. There's Casino Trail, Business 441, which is where the food line and fast food places are at. I stayed at the Microtel, pretty inexpensive and was a good enough room. It is right next to a Taco Bell and near a McDonald's. Cherokee Helicopters is here, but I'd recommend scenic helicopter tours that we showed in our Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge videos. I think much better customer service. At Harris Casino, there is free parking, or you may want to consider lodging here. Fairly inexpensive, also has some pet-friendly rooms. You can usually find good deals at Booking.com. This casino is huge, a large gaming floor with slots, also a massive 90-foot screen at their Caesars Sports Booking area. Even if you are not a gambler, it might be good to come here, just for the food. Some really good restaurants like Guy Fieri's Kitchen and Bar with excellent barbecue and his creative burgers. Even the food court has some top-notch eateries. There's an Ultra Star Multitainment Center, which includes a bowling alley. All right, let's continue on US 19 towards beautiful Maggie Valley. You can see the casino way off in the distance. A couple of miles east of the casino is the Santaland Fun Park and Zoo. It is open from May through October and closed on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. It is $28 for admission. Children two and under are free. Another mile east of Santaland is the Happy Holiday RV Village with RV sites and cabins right on Sokol Creek. They also have a beautiful trout stock private pond. On the grounds, there's an arcade, a pizza place, and ice cream parlor. As we start to head through the Soko Gap, this stretch of US-19 winding over the foothills of the Smokies towards Maggie Valley is so gorgeous, especially in the mornings. It's why bikers love this area so much. Ain't that right, Lori and Mark from Cape Coral? Just a 15-minute drive east of the casino is Sokol Falls. It's easy to miss. 
parking located on a blind curve with a little sign. But there's a planned remodel of this with a parking area that will be on the top side of the hill with restrooms, as well as adding a mile loop trail along three sets of falls to the big falls. All part of the Cherokee improving ecotourism. As well as US-19, the Blue Ridge Parkway goes through the Sokol Gap. It is considered America's longest linear park. Runs for 469 miles through Virginia and North Carolina, linking the Shenandoah National Park to the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. It ends at Cherokee at Newfound Gap Road near the O'Connell Lefty Visitor Center. Now back on US-19, which is now Sokol Road, as we enter Maggie Valley, a laid-back town 16 miles from Cherokee, popular for fun festivals, car shows, motorcycle rallies. On the left is Beer Waters Brewing, where you can try crawfish bites or Appalachian flatbread pizza, along with the craft beers. You order your food and drinks from the bar and then find a seat, a nice shaded deck overlooking Jonathan Creek. There are several vintage style motels. The pet friendly Castlewood Inn, which is located next to Fantasy Mini Golf and Game Room. A round of golf is just $6 per person. Next to that is the Blue Mountain Inn, which is also pet friendly. And next door, Country Vittles Family Restaurant. A couple of blocks away is Market Square, a long strip mall with a variety of several shops and eateries, including Cafe Italiano and Jelly Bellies for candy and homemade chocolate and fudge. I went to the Maggie Valley Sandwich Shop across the street. This is one of the best places for lunch with spinach and wheat wraps or croissants, all very fresh quality ingredients. There's a nice little scenic picnic area in the back on Jonathan Creek. Further down Sokol Road is Mountaineer Crafts. They have everything from knives, moccasins, jams, jelly, sauces, shirts, jewelry. You walk in here and it just smells so great, which is from the soaps. You can also get a lot of home decor items and homemade fudge made fresh daily from April through December, which you can enjoy on the rocking chairs out front or even better, take out back to their beautiful garden area overlooking the creek. Maintained by Dan the gardener, who was kind enough to give me a little tour. And what are those called? Dahlias. Dahlias. D-A-L-H-I-A-S. And next to Mountain Aircrafts is Parham Memorial Park. A good place to bring some food and just chill out with a picnic table right on the creek. In a scene like out of a Thomas Kincaid painting. All right, gonna show you two RV campgrounds and two cabins. We take State Road 1307, where shortly after you cross Jonathan Creek, on the left is Bear Run Cabins. These are four cabins on a hill, each with a deck overlooking the valley and the mountains. They have TVs, full kitchen, fireplace, two bedrooms, one bath, and a covered porch with swing and rockers. They run from $150 to $180 per night, June through December, and 130 to 150 per night, January through May. There's an $80 cleaning fee and an $80 one-time pet fee. Can be booked on booking.com. Further up State Road 1307 is Cross Creek RV Park. This is a no-frills RV park for the self-contained rig, open from May through October. There's no restrooms or showers, but there is a fenced-in area for dogs. And a little ways up from that, another group of luxury log cabins, the village at Twin Falls. Each cabin has two master bedrooms with a king bed, full bath, a fireplace, Wi-Fi, washer and dryer, widescreen TVs, and all the other modern conveniences of home. You can relax in a rocking chair on a covered porch while listening to the sounds of Jonathan Creek just a few steps away. These can be booked on Trivago. And on the other side of the creek, on Suckle Road, is Stonebridge RV Resort. This RV resort has plenty of amenities. A camp store, pool, splash pad, basketball and sand volleyball courts, a game room, arcade. Full hookup pull-through sites. Some sites right on the creek. And a variety of cabins, from deluxe chalets to creekside cottages.
Another 35 miles to the east is Asheville that we filmed three years ago. Just a couple more places as we head back towards Cherokee. There's Creekside Lodge, as the name implies, right on Jonathan Creek. Excellent reviews, although not pet friendly. You can book on Expedia. And further down, the stomping grounds, a dance hall, where a lot of clogging events happen. You ask, what is clogging? See our Pigeon Forge video, the Hatfield and McCoys, as well as the Comedy Barn segment. And finally, near the summit at Sokol Gap, is the Sokol Crafts Gift Shop and Tower, where for a dollar, you can climb this nine-story tower for a great view of Maggie Valley. And don't forget, included with the price of admission is the Model Train Museum. So once you uh, finish the train ride, you can go in there and check out. They said it's like voted top 10. Look at this guy. They said it's voted like top 10 museums in the United States or something. No, they said, or maybe in the, maybe in the state of North Carolina. I don't really know. We got photo bombs. <laughs> Say bye, Bella. Well, that concludes our five video series of the Smokies. We do hope to return in the fall as we plan to do Knoxville. In the meantime, you can subscribe to the Smoky Mountain family to stay up on what is happening in the Smokies. We hope to be doing more videos with them in the future, in other places as well as the Smokies. Next, we head to another place with an Indian name as we do a three video series of Wisconsin, including Milwaukee, Green Bay, and the Wisconsin Dells, considered the Pigeon Forge of the North. We are Tampa Aereo Media. We film travel promos across the USA for stock footage, or if you would like to hire us to film your city, region, or resort, contact us at info at tampaaerialmedia.com. The Cherokee never say goodbye because they believe they will always see you again. They just say, see you later. From Shikana Hay, I wish blessings to you wherever you may be.